from the National News Studio, Sri Lanka. Good evening. Welcome to the National News Broadcast. Coming to you live from the National News Studio, I am Lakshendra Singha and alongside me is Charan Mascarenhas. Up first are your top stories for tonight. The Russian plane leaves the island. Minister Vijaydas Rajapaksa says the aircraft was able to be released without causing a diplomatic row. Long queues once again at filling stations. The Litro company says gas could be provided once again in the next two days. A two-year suspended prison sentence on Minister Prasanna Ranatunga. The Trade Minister requests the general public not to accumulate food stocks unnecessarily. The JVP reiterates that the reason for the dollar crisis is the economic changes that had been brought after 1977. The first T20 match of the current series between Sri Lanka and Australia will be telecast live over Channel I tomorrow. 50 persons killed in an attack on a church in Nigeria. Or to those and other stories in detail, we start off with the top story for tonight. The Colombo Commercial High Court has ordered today to suspend the enjoining order preventing an aircraft belonging to the Russian Aeroflot airline leaving Sri Lanka. Upon lengthy examination of a motion filed in this regard by the Attorney General High Court Judge Harsha Setunga has suspended the order. Accordingly, the plane left for Russia at 6 p.m. today. Judge of the Colombo Commercial High Court has issued the order suspending the aircraft leaving from Moscow from the Kutnaika Bandaranaike International Airport on the 2nd of this month after considering a complaint lodged by a company in Ireland. However, Additional Solicitor General Sumati Dharmavardhana appearing on behalf of the Attorney General through a motion has requested the judiciary to suspend the restraining order. He has pointed out that the petitioners have obtained the enjoining order after concealing the truth and misguiding the courts. The judge has stated that when the case was taken up for hearing last Friday, the enjoining order has not been released. The additional Solicitor General has posed a query before the courts as to how, under such circumstances, the attorney at law appearing on behalf of the petitioners, Aruna De Silva, with a fiscal official, went to the control of the chamber of Katnaika Airport and prevented the leaving of the Russian aircraft. A compact disc containing 14 photographs establishing the arrival of the attorney and the fiscal officer to the control unit of the airport was also submitted to the courts. The judge also told the open court that if what the additional Solicitor General had stated was true, misappropriation of judicial powers had taken place. Judge Harsha Setunga has also stated that the attorney at law had committed a serious offence inappropriate for a legal counsellor. The additional Solicitor General has further stated that the enjoining order has violated the 37th clause of the Civil Aviation Act. In the meantime, Minister of Justice Vijay Dasar Rajapaksa says that legal action will be taken against the fiscal official of the Commercial High Court and an attorney at law who have presented facts to the Chief Operations Officer of the Katunayaka International Airport, distorting the verdict delivered by the Colombo Commercial High Court regarding the Russian Aeroflot aircraft. The minister at a media briefing today further said that the Russian ambassador has pledged him to resolve the dispute without leading it to a diplomatic issue. Minister Vijaydas Rajapaksa said that in a lengthy discussion with the Russian ambassador, he has conveyed the apologies of the Sri Lankan government over the difficulties encountered. He added that both parties have come into an agreement not to cause any damages to the bilateral friendship as a result of this issue. The Russian envoy has also guaranteed Russia's assistance to Sri Lanka in future as well. He has also conveyed measures to bring more Russian tourists into the country. The minister further said that Russia also has a doubt of the undue influences of the attorney at law and the fiscal officer. He added that it would take some more days to receive an official report on the incident.
රුසියානු රාජ්‍යයේ යම් කිසි සැක සංකාවක් මතු කළා මෙම නියෝගය ඒරොප්ලොට් සමාගමට එරෙහිව පමනක් ලබා දී තිබෙදී අධිකරණයේ පිස්කල් නිලධාරියා සහ නීතිඥවරයේ එම ගුවන් යානා පාලනය කරන ප්‍රධාන නිල මෙහෙයු මැදිරියේ ඒ නිලධාරියාට යම් කිසි ආකාරයක තර්ජනයක් කරලා තිබෙනවා ගමන් කිරීම අත්හිටුවේ නැත්නම් ඔහුට එරෙහිව අධිකරණයට අපහාස කිරීමක් යටතේ චෝදනා කරන බවට යම් තර්ජනයක් කරා කියලා අපිට වාර්තා ලැබිලා තියෙනවා ඒ පිළිබඳව නිල වශයෙන් අපිට වාර්තා තව දවසක් දෙකක් ඇතුළත ලැබේවි ඒ වාර්තා අනුව ඒ අදාළ පිස්කල්වරයාට එරෙහිව සහ එසේ හැසිරුණු නීතිඥවරයාට එරෙහිව අපිට නීතිමය පියවර ගන්න සිද්ධ වෙනවා අපි පිළිගන්නවා මේක ඒකපාක්ෂික වාර්න නියෝග දෙනකොට අධිකරණය මීට වඩා දැඩි සැලකිල්ලෙන් යුතුව කටයුතු කරන්න ඕනේ කියලා රටේ පිළිගත්ත නීති පද්ධතිය අනුගමනය කළා නම් මේක වෙන්නෙත් නැහැ ඒ වගේම මෙවැනි නඩු ඉදිරිපත් කරනු ලබන නීතිඥවරුන්ටත් ලොකු වගකීමක් තියෙනවා පොදු නඩුවකින් ඔබ්බට ගිය රාජතාන්ත්‍රික ගැටලු ඇති නොවන ආකාරයෙන් වගකීමෙන් කටයුතු කරන්න A peaceful protest to safeguard Russia-Sri Lanka friendship was held in front of the Prime Minister's office today. The agitators who have marched to the office of the Russian embassy has presented a letter to the office expressing the regrets of the Sri Lankan people over any feelings of hurt sustained by the Russian government due to the incident. The protest was organized by a group representing the tourism sector and a group of Sri Lankan graduates. The postal department says it has decided to accept once again postal items for Russia. The department has previously decided not to accept items to be mailed to Russia due to existing air transportation difficulties. However, the problem is being resolved through the measures to direct the items to Russia via alternate routes. The postal department further says that, however, some delays may occur in sending the postal items to the relevant destination. The sale of Laugh's gas has recommenced yesterday. Our correspondents say that consumers in large numbers were lining up to purchase items. Meanwhile, the literal company says that they were not engaged in gas distribution today as well. A heated environment has been created near the Laugh's gas marketing sales center in Jabrulia, Kasbeva, where nearly 1,000 persons had flocked to purchase gas cylinders. Steps have been taken to issue gas according to tokens issued as some outsiders attempted to use undue influence to purchase gas. The Litro Gas says steps are being taken to immediately distribute a ship containing a stock of 2,900 metric tons of Litro Gas, which has arrived at the Colombo Harbour this morning. The Sri Lanka Private Bus Owners Association says only one third of the total island-wide private bus fleet has been deployed for service today due to the existing fuel shortage. President of the association, Gamanu Vijay Ratna, says tomorrow's bus transport is also in an uncertain state. Many private buses daily operating in the Hatton town have left the service due to fuel shortage. Long queues have been observed for several days near the filling stations in the Bandaragama town. Diesel fuel has reached the Kahagolla filling station in Diyatalava today after several days. Our correspondent says that the chairman of the Haputale Pradeshya Sabha has mediated to give priority for the issuance of fuel to vehicles in Diyatalava, causing severe difficulties to motorists in other areas. Our correspondent says filling stations in Ambalantota have been receiving kerosene oil since this morning after a lapse of several days. Cooperative filling stations in Polonaro district have commenced issuance of fuel to farmers. The Public Utilities Commission says a power cut of the duration of 2 hours and 15 minutes is being conducted from today till the 10th of this month. It further says that on the 11th and 12th of this month, a one-hour power cut will also be carried out. Chairman of the Ceylon Electricity Board, MMC Ferdinando, participating in a media briefing today, said that daily power cuts will be ended prior to the end of this year. Now, in the meantime, Trade Minister Nalin Fernando requests the general public to refrain from accumulating unnecessarily the essential commodities. The minister at a media briefing at the ministry today said that adequate quantities of essential items, including rice, exist. 
Minister Nalim Fernando said that if the people attempt to stockpile goods exceeding their normal requirements, then such a situation would affect the stocks at the market. The minister has pointed out that therefore the duty and responsibility of every citizen is to purchase goods only to fulfill their needs. He added that there is no room for shortage of essential items at present. However, paddy would be imported if a need arises. The minister has stressed that there will not be any shortage of rice in the country in the next six or seven months. We are constantly receiving news of more housewives showing an interest in home gardening as a remedy to face a possible crisis. Mrs. Srila Ratnayaka of Himbiliagul Valley Mother is a proud owner of a successful home garden. She is a member of the Sita Mukanta Farmer Society of the Agrarian Services Centre in Kapatipola. She is receiving a bountiful harvest by growing different varieties of vegetables including manioc, sweet potatoes, tomatoes, gotukala, beans, bitter gourd and bananas using only organic fertilizer. She is sharing the harvest with her neighbors. Minister Roshan Dranasinghe has taken measures to set up a farm in Damulla. The minister says a methodology will be devised to have three cultivation seasons through proper water management. Minister Prasanna Ranatunga, who has been found guilty to the charges filed in a case regarding receiving monies through threats and intimidations from a businessman in 2015, was sentenced to a suspended prison term and fines. The Colombo High Court Judge Manjula Tilakaratna has imposed Ranatunga a two-year rigorous imprisonment and suspended for five years. He has also ordered the accused to pay a fine of 25 million rupees. The judge had also ordered to sentence him to an additional nine months imprisonment if he failed to pay the fine. The judge has also ordered the accused to pay further fine of 1 million rupees to the affected businessman and to impose a further prison term of three months in the event of neglecting to pay this fine. The High Court judge has also acquitted other respondents, wife of the minister Maureen Ranatunga and another person from all charges. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa says the Samagi Jana Balavegia has planned to introduce a massive Grow More Food campaign. He has stated at several public rallies recently that the program will be implemented in 14,022 Grama Niladari divisions. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa said that malnutrition levels of expecting mothers and children were reported to have gone up. A severe food shortage is taking place in the country. A massive destruction of cultivations has been created by halting importation of chemical fertilizer essential for agricultural purposes. He added that they will also commence a program to safeguard food security in the country. He has further stated that the SJB will go to the streets if the government fails to provide fertilizer to all needy farmers. In the meantime, leader of the National People's Power parliamentarian Anura Kumar Desanayaka says that the reason for the present-day dollar crisis is the economic strategy implemented in the country after the year 1977. He has made these remarks at a public meeting in Trincomalee yesterday. Parliamentarian Anra Kumar Desanayaka said that the end result is the scarcity of goods and price increases. The dollar shortage has contributed to the present-day bankruptcy. He added that Sri Lanka had a surplus of 40 million rupees in the year 1977 after importing goods using the dollars. However, in the year 2021, Sri Lanka imported goods valued at 20 billion rupees but received only 12 billion rupees from exports. Sri Lanka's crisis has been aggravated due to the discriminative loan take-ins. Secretary of Sri Lankan Cricket Mohan De Silva says income from the sale of tickets of the Australia-Sri Lanka cricket tournament will be deployed in activities in the interest of the general public. He has made these remarks at a media briefing in Colombo this morning. Secretary of Sri Lanka Cricket Mohan De Silva said that they appreciate the arrival of the Australian team to the country at the crucial moment and extended thanks on behalf of Sri Lanka Cricket to Cricket Australia and the Australian government in this regard. He further said that Sri Lanka will receive an income of $2.5 million from the tournament. 
All income received from the sale of tickets will be handed over to the Ministry of Sports to be used for the well-being of the general public. The media meeting was held in order to enlighten the general public on the tournament against Australia. Captain of the Sri Lanka T20 and ODI teams Dasun Shanaka and Captain of the Sri Lanka Test Cricket team Dimut Karna Ratna have also attended the event. Captain of the Sri Lanka Test Cricket team Dimut Karna Ratna said that all Sri Lankans have been accorded the opportunity to watch the matches. The tournament includes three T20 matches, five one-day internationals and two test matches. The first T20 of the current series is scheduled to commence at 7 p.m. tomorrow at the R. Prem Dasa Stadium in Colombo. The match will be telecast live on Rupavahini Channel. The live commentary of tomorrow's match will commence at 5.30 p.m. Director of the Lady Ridgeway Children's Hospital, Dr. G. Vijay Surya, says resident patients at the hospital are receiving meals subjected to proper nutrition. He said at a media briefing today that false reports have been published in this regard. Director of the Lady Ridgeway Children's Hospital, Dr. G. Vijay Surya, said that he could say with responsibility that all children patients are being treated equally and all are being given a nutritious meal three times of the day. Today is the 59th day of protests in front of the Presidential Secretariat at Golf Face Green. Large groups were engaged in agitations at the protest site last night as well. However, a decline in the number of protesters has been observed, probably due to the bad weather condition. In other news, the President of the Election Commission, Attorney at Law, Nimal Punjiev, has conducted a meeting with all political party secretaries at the Commission today. Election monitoring organizations representatives have also attended. Discussions were conducted on the revision of the 2022 electoral lists. Attention has also been focused on many issues, including the present state of the Election Commission and the amendments to be included in the election system. Minister Manoj Nanekar says that the government hopes to immediately release necessary circulars for the government workers to migrate overseas. The minister has made these remarks at a meeting with a group of officials of foreign employment agencies. He further said that the Sri Lanka workers will be protected and that an appropriate environment has been created in the foreign job sector. Proposals pertaining to reducing a minimum age limit for migrating to 18 years and to make reductions according to the needs of the relevant countries were also discussed. Final rites of veteran actress Sumana Amar Singer will take place at the General Secretary Cemetery Borella at 5 p.m. on next Wednesday. She was 74 years old at the time of her demise. The late Mrs. Amar Singer had demonstrated her acting skills in many movies, including Sunetra, Sukiri Kella, Obai Mamai, Ranagiravi, Medasa Kumatada, Sudhuparavio, Dilika and Nedum Sina. She was the wife of veteran film actor and director, the late Roy De Silva. Sumanamara Singham was born in Ranavana Kandy. 
She was selected as a beauty queen in the Miss Marie Lal Beauty Contest in 1965. She had gained eligibility for cinema appearances by securing the second position in the La Sanamona Contest organized by the Janatha newspaper. One of the senior members of the Hela Howler and an intellectual in languages, Sandadas Koparaheva has passed away at the age of 99 years. He was an author and a former teacher at St. Thomas's College, Mount Lavinia. He is regarded as a literary expert who has rendered a significant contribution to the language sector. Some of his exceptional literary creations include an analysis on Dham Gatamala and an appreciation of European arts, as well as a compilation on the commemoration of Maitri Tero. The remains of Sandadas Koparaheva will be kept at a private funeral parlour in Borella from 9 a.m. tomorrow. The funeral is scheduled to take place at the General Cemetery, Borella, in the evening of the same day. Stay tuned with us. News from overseas coming your way after this short break. And in news from overseas, at least 50 were killed in a massacre at a Catholic church in southwest Nigeria. Witnesses said the armed men entered St. Francis a Catholic Church in the town of Owo and fired at the congregation during a service to mark the holiday of Pentecost. Nigeria has experienced an upsurge in violence in recent months. Kidnappings and attacks have been reported across the vast country. The church has denied initial reports that the priest had been abducted. No figures for the numbers killed in the attack have been officially confirmed. But a doctor at a local hospital quoted by the Reuters news agency said at least 50 bodies had been taken to two hospitals in the town. It is reported that children were among the dead. Pope Francis was praying for the victims who had been painfully stricken in the moment of celebration, according to a statement from the Vatican. In the meantime, the United Kingdom says Ukraine will be supplied with multiple launch rocket systems that can attack targets up to 80 kilometers away in a move coordinated with the United States. Defense Secretary Ben Wallace said UK support for Ukraine would change as Russia's tactics evolved, explaining the gift of the M270 multiple launch systems, which are similar to the systems the United States is sending the M142 high mobility artillery rocket systems. The United Kingdom and Ukrainian troops would be trained on how to use the new launchers in Britain after it previously announced it would train Ukrainian personnel to use armored vehicles. Moscow has denounced airspace closures by three Eastern European countries which prevented Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov from travelling to Serbia as a hostile action. Countries surrounding Serbia, Bulgaria, North Macedonia His and aircraft. Montenegro closed Lavrov their airspace to, to an official plane that would have carried Moscow's top Monday, diplomat to Belgrade today. Alexander the Kremlin's Eastern spokesman Eastern told reporters such action could cause problems with the timing of high-level diplomatic meetings but they would not prevent Moscow from maintaining contacts with friendly countries. On some other news now, Shimonita Hydrangea Garden in Japan opened today for this year's season. The opening of the Hydrangea Garden coincided with the beginning of a rainy season. Flower heads about 20,000 Hydrangea trees have just begun to turn blue or pink.
In more stories from Japan, a group of local volunteers in Hokkaido pulled out Japanese sake aged in the sea for 10 months. 100 bottles of sake has been submerged off the coast of Kushiro in northern Japan last August. Left on the seabed at 11 meters in depth, the bottles were covered by shells when the group pulled them out yesterday. The group expects the aging process in the ocean will make sake milder with the movement of currents and waves. The group submerged additional 300 bottles yesterday and those will be served at restaurants in Kushiro City this autumn. And in sports news, Sri Lanka women's cricket team has recorded a 93-run victory in the third match of the current One Day International Series against the Pakistan women's cricket team in Karachi. Sri Lanka women's cricketers batting first scored 260 runs for the loss of seven wickets at the end of the 50 allotted overs. Chamari Atapattu playing an excellent inning has scored 101 runs facing 85 deliveries. Her score had included 13 boundaries and one six or one six or rather. Harshita Madhavi has also scored 75 runs. In reply, the Pakistan women's team has managed to score only 167 runs all out in 41 overs and four deliveries. Oshudhi Rana Singh and Chamari Atapattu have captured two wickets each for the Sri Lanka team. Meanwhile, Rafael Nadal of Spain has been successful in winning the men's single championship. Sharon, any plans for tomorrow night? Definitely a set of uh, cassava chips, water and all set to cheer for both two awesome teams. We invite all the cricket fans out there to catch the action live on Rupa Vahini channel. And with that, we wrap up tonight's news bulletin. Do join us tomorrow for more of the very latest. Until then, stay safe and good night.